Hey, so today I want to talk to you about continuous integration, continuous delivery, and how to choose which platform to use. I've got a few listed here. Um, these four are probably the most commonly, the ones that would, that would immediately come to mind. Uh, Travis CI used to be fantastic. Uh, it's been acquired. All the, um, most of the best people left. And um, it's really something I wouldn't put any new projects on today. If you're currently using Travis CI and it's working, that's fine. Uh, but if you're, if you're on Travis, that's something I would probably migrate off of. Circle CI used to be my favorite. Um, they were the leader for a long time, had the best user interface and worked really, really well, but have not, have not kept up the pace of innovation with the other two, AWS and GitHub. So again, Circle CI, if, if you have a project on there and it's working fine, leave it there. But I wouldn't put a new project on Circle CI today. AWS. Um, there's a couple of really good reasons why you might choose to use AWS Code Build and Code Pipeline. These are really, really great because you don't have to sign a new agreement. If you're already using AWS, uh, it's integrated right with your existing spend. And the um, identity and access management is all integrated already. It's particularly good, code pipeline and code build, at deploying cloud formation stacks, at deploying infrastructure. So if that is the thing that you're looking to deploy that you need to manage, AWS code build code pipeline might be a good choice. It's got some really interesting integration with code build, uh, with uh, cloud formation. The user experience is not great. And that's true for AWS user, user interface all throughout the products, all of the thousand products. Uh, it's better than it used to be, but it's not great. One that might be a surprise to you that is, I think, the best option considering everything else is GitHub. So GitHub has a feature called Actions, which um, much like Travis, Circle, or CodeBuild, will build your code. Um, they will also let you run linters, security scanners, and hook up deployments. Um, when would you be forced to not use AWS? Um, oh, and, and I almost forgot, there's, um, there's an important one that I didn't mention, Azure Pipelines. I didn't mention Azure Pipelines separately because GitHub Actions is actually built on top of Azure Pipelines. So I'm not sure of a reason why you would want to use Azure Pipelines instead of GitHub Actions. Um, so so um, Azure Pipelines should at least be mentioned, but uh, I would jump straight to GitHub Actions. GitHub is already where your source code is. Um, and, and why not use AWS Code Builder or... Um, so why not use AWS Code Build? You absolutely can't use AWS Code Build if you need to build mobile apps. So many, many software companies have a mobile app that they're needing to build along with all of their backend code. And uh, you cannot get a Mac OS builder in Code Build. It's just not available. It is available right out of the box in GitHub Actions. And so that would be an immediate uh, forcing function to get over onto GitHub Actions. But there's a bunch of other reasons that I think are actually even more compelling around the developer experience that I think make GitHub Actions the right choice to use. One is they have all of this security uh, scanning functionality built in. And so not only are they already holding your code, they um, can publish the, the, the um, security policies for your um, your set of source code, like what you the the way people should report security vulnerabilities, they also have some supply chain stuff already hooked up. And so the line here about Dependabot alerts, GitHub already has built-in features to scan your dependencies and tell you, not only tell you, but open a pull request with um, security updates for your project's dependencies. A huge advantage. You can set up similar functionality on the other pipelines, uh, on the other uh, continuous integration tools, but it is head and shoulders easier to use on GitHub. GitHub also has code scanning, so something called CodeQL. This is in beta right now. You can see code scanning alerts down at the bottom. It will actually do um, 
much more detailed data flow analysis of your source code if you configure it um, and proactively tell you when bugs have been checked into the code when there are known vulnerabilities in your source code. Also amazing. Uh, but it goes even beyond that. So we've all used uh, linters or tools to check the formatting of your source code and to tell you about style fixes, everything from style fixes to more serious um, potential bugs. Um, actions that run inside GitHub have the ability to not only do a pass or fail and put information into the log file about your source code, but they can actually post annotations directly on the affected or relevant line of code. And so the screenshot here is from one of my projects where I've got the review dog action running um, a linter called Golang CI. Really nice collection of linters for Go code. And this is reporting that on this line of code, line 288, um, in the function get code build log info, the result is always nil. Um, so that's probably a bug that I've missed in that in that function, and I should go check that. But it's reported on the pull request on the affected line of code. And you can see how much more streamlined that is for a developer to get that feedback automatically from the system right on the pull request rather than having to go scroll through thousands of lines of log files trying to find why did why did the the test run on this pull request fail there's more um, so another really really great github action is the release drafter so this is an example of a release these release notes um, were written by a GitHub action as I merged changes into the main branch. And then when I was ready to release, I just double checked that that um, this was actually what I wanted to release and I hit save. The version number on the top was automatically created. The changes in this change log, you can see there's a, a major section called changes and a major section called features. Features even has an emoji in it. Um, those were automatically categorized by the release drafter action as it saw pull requests coming in based on the labels on those pull requests and the descriptions on those pull requests. So it's, again, this is something that saves a ton of labor. Um, so the big idea, the big concept here is really that I think all of your continuous integration checks, your builds, and um, all of the things giving feedback on a pull request should run as close to the source code as possible. GitHub already holds your source code and the user experience is better. So when it comes to um, GitHub versus code build, most of those things should probably run on GitHub. That is the best choice for almost any project I can think of. Now, what about further down the pipeline? The, the um, Preference swings a little more towards something like AWS or Azure Pipelines when it comes to deploying um, application code into the cloud. If you're deploying in, uh, from uh, an AWS code pipeline, having the permissions and the roles and the logging and all of that inside the AWS actions rather than inside code build makes a lot more sense because those permissions are just going to line up much easier. There is a really interesting middle ground, which is GitHub supports self-hosted runners. So you can actually spin up a deploy machine or a fleet of deploy machines in AWS, connect them into your GitHub project as runners, and you configure the correct roles and permissions on those machines. So now when you have a deploy workflow inside GitHub, all of your all of your development workflows, the scanners and everything, will work as usual. But then you can say, for the deploy workflow, I want it to run on my self-hosted runners. Those will hand off and execute inside AWS on AWS machines uh, with a lot more flexibility than code build ever had and taking advantage of all of the nice um, identity and access management functionality in AWS. So the most sophisticated version is Use GitHub Actions for the nice developer experience and all of the nice integration, but at the end of your deploy pipeline, use an, a cloud-hosted, self-hosted runner, whether using uh, AWS or Azure 
or um, Google Cloud. I heard somebody's using Google Cloud. I'm not sure who. Um, use self-hosted runners to take your code the last mile out into, into the cloud. Uh, so that's it. That is a quick run through of why I think GitHub Actions are the right uh, choice today if you're setting up continuous integration, continuous deployment on your project. And I'll talk to you next time.